Quasi here. And in today's video, I want to share with you how you can raise your self-worth and your self-esteem and why most people are unable to do so no matter how hard they try. This was something that I've struggled with for a very, very long time in my life. And when I got over it and I you know, developed a healthy sense of self-esteem, it no longer was a battle trying to achieve my goals. I didn't have to battle with this other part of me. It became much more effortless. It became much smoother. I could just make an intention, go out there and get it. But before that, before that period in my life, it wasn't quite like this. So in this video, I want to share with you three of the biggest principles that I live by every single day that has helped me maintain a healthy sense of self-worth so that you can do this for yourself. Before I begin this video, I want to quickly announce that I made a brand new bootcamp video for you. If you scroll down to the pinned comments down below, you'll be able to see a link that'll allow you to get access to our email list, our exclusive email list where I can share stuff that I can't really share on the channel. So go down, click on it, you'll get access to the bootcamp and many other bonuses that I can't quite share here. So without further delay, let's go right ahead and get started. Today, I want to talk to you about having a healthy sense of self-esteem or self-worth, whatever that means. Now. The biggest problem I see nowadays and with most people and also when I got started in this journey, the biggest mistake I made was trying affirmations, trying visual, visualizing and many techniques to help me uh, get more confident, become more confident. And what I saw with all of these things is that I felt good temporarily, right? I could convince myself, I could tell myself, no, 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 you're confident. No, 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 you're good enough. You see a cute girl, you want to go talk to that girl, you're like, oh, well, I'm good enough to talk to this girl, I'm confident enough. You can keep telling yourself that all you want, but your mind doesn't quite believe it, right? You won't really get convinced by it. And that's because if you imagine we have a conscious mind and then this leads to the unconscious or the subconscious mind, right? So this is our subconscious, this is conscious. What happens is the conscious mind is actually the gateway to the subconscious. So when the conscious mind doesn't accept the premise that you're presenting to it, the premise is, oh, I'm confident enough, I'm good enough. The conscious mind, when it doesn't accept it, it can't go to the subconscious. The subconscious overrules it. So your whole life you've believed that you weren't good enough to go talk to that person or to apply to that job or to start up that business. And when you start to believe that, it becomes ingrained within your subconscious. It becomes a conviction in your subconscious. I made a video on this, by the way, if you click the little I and I'll actually put it down in the pinned comments below as well, how to reprogram your subconscious mind. But essentially, this is what happens. When you tell yourself, your conscious mind, all these premises of, I'm good enough. No, 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 I can do this. I'm good enough to get that job. You can tell yourself that all you want. But if there is no substantial evidence, which is the key to the conscious mind, the mind needs proof in order to become accepting and open up this gateway, right? So whenever you are presented with, so any, anytime you've been presented with a theory, right? Like even conspiracy theories, they have a lot of convincing evidence that breaks down your mental barriers and you just readily accept it, right? So if you look at some of the conspiracy theories, if you look at the flat earth theory, right? It can get very convincing if you get deep down into the arguments of it. And that's essentially what happens. When your mind is presented with enough proof, it lets its guard down. And then your subconscious begins to absorb it, right? So the question is, how can we do this consciously in a way that we can, you know, program ourselves with healthy things that actually serve us and serve our goals, right? So that's what this video is about, helping you do that, break down those barriers. So I want to give you my story of how I struggle with it in my personal life. So uh, when I was growing up and I was in high school, I had very low self-esteem because I was bullied and people told me that you're ugly, you'll never do this, you'll never do that, you'll never be able to um, get a go, etc. And so when they gave me those rationalities, those arguments, I started to believe them. Oh, your teeth are crooked, so that's why you'll never be successful, you'll never get a go, etc. So I started to believe them and I was like, well, it's because of my crooked teeth, so I begged my parents to get me braces to fix my teeth, right? So, and then well, I saw that when, as soon as my teeth were fixed, I had this image of me becoming a completely different person. And that's exactly what happened. I blossomed, I peaked, if you will, uh, once I had straighter teeth and I felt better about myself. <clears throat> so 
that was my story of you know how I dealt with low self-esteem and I couldn't go ahead and do the things that I wanted. I couldn't go ahead and um, you know apply to jobs or it even took me a very long time to start a business because I didn't think I was good enough. I was thinking, well, why would anyone want to listen to me? Um, when I worked on that and I figured out how to crack that, that's when my life really started to blossom. You know, I started to go ahead and just go out there and make an intention and take what it is I wanted. So imagine not having this internal dialogue all the time telling you, oh, you're not good enough for this. What would be possible for your life, right? You would just simply make an intention of, okay, I want to start a business, so I'm going to go ahead and start a business. I'm going to go approach that cute person and strike up a conversation with them, so I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And uh, that's exactly what was possible for me. And these three keys were the biggest reason why. So let's go right ahead and begin with these three keys. Key number one that was absolutely crucial for me, and I hope you can see this, is give up the need for self-worth. And this is counterintuitive. Give up need for self-worth. All right. I'm going to erase this and try to do it again. Give up the need for self-worth. What do I mean by this? And this is very counterintuitive. You might be thinking, well, I can only become worthy when I, if I try hard to be worthy. It's actually quite the opposite. When you give up the need for self-worth, you actually become worthy. And this is why. So imagine telling yourself, trying to convince yourself that you're worthy all the time. No, no, I am good enough for this. I am good enough for that. When you keep telling yourself that, you actually affirm the opposite. As opposed to someone who does truly believe that they are worthy. Do you think they need to tell themselves constantly that they're worthy? No, they don't. Right? Truly worthy, truly confident people don't need to tell themselves that they're confident. They just go out there and do whatever it is they want. Right? So the very fact that you keep telling yourself that, oh, I'm worthy, you know, I'm deserving of this, affirms the opposite. And that's why your subconscious mind will never accept it. Another way to do that, counterintuitively, is to tell yourself that you're worthy, but give yourself proof of why you're worthy. Look at past reference experiences. That also works, but this is what I found to be the best solution, to giving up the need for self-worth. Which leads me to solution number two, a principle that I also live by, which is don't think less of yourself. Think of yourself less. Don't think less of yourself. Simply think about yourself less. I don't know where I heard this quote, but I've lived by it and it's super helpful for me. And why that is, is because when you keep thinking more and more about yourself, you can't help but compare yourself with other people, okay? You can't help but compare yourself to other people. If I keep thinking about myself and my capabilities of, oh, am I good enough to do this? Am I not good enough to do this? You just keep yourself locked in a bubble of comfort, right? Because you'll only stick to things that you're comfortable doing. Oh, I'm, I'm confident in my ability to do this, so I'm gonna do this. You won't take any risks, and if you don't take any risks, you're never gonna expand your comfort zone and grow. So, keeping on thinking about yourself all the time, and by the way, this is a trap most people get into when they start the journey of personal development. They become very self-centered, right? They just only keep thinking about themselves. So make sure you don't fall into this trap and catch yourself when you fall in this trap. So don't think less of yourself, just think about yourself less. An example of when this has really helped me was when I started this business, I started doing predominantly a lot of sales calls, right? I would take these calls, consultation calls with prospective clients. And I remember the first time, you know, I was met with this one prospective client who was much more successful than I was. And, but then this person wanted help with their business or sort of their mindset to help them level up their business. And I was like, well, I don't even make that much money, so I don't really feel good enough helping you. That's what I was thinking in my mind. So at that moment, I was thinking about myself. Do you see that? I was thinking more about myself than about the prospect that was right in front of me. And then when I made this epiphany of, wait a second, if I keep thinking about myself, I will never be able to help this other person. Do you see what I mean? So 
that sale I completely lost. But then in the future, this realization helped me come from a different mindset, approaching future prospects. And in the future, when I had prospects who were probably making more money than me or in a different place than me, I thought, how can I solve a problem for this prospect so that the investment becomes worthy for them? Instead of thinking, oh, can I help this person? You know, can I, I don't make more money than this person, so how can I help them? Instead of thinking that, I'm thinking of what problem can I solve for this person that'll make it worth it for them? So I'm thinking about the prospect and their problems as opposed to me and my capability. Do you see the difference? This is very, very important. Once you can start to see this difference, you'll never struggle with self-worth ever again. When you are with a person that you're speaking to, instead of thinking about yourself and being in your head of, what's the right thing to say? What can I say next that'll get me the sale or get me laid, right? Instead of doing that, if you're just simply present to the moment, which is another key epiphany I made, if you're just simply present to the moment and you have a goal in mind, which is helping this person, you know, getting the sale or, you know, uh, I don't know, getting this person to be your girlfriend or boyfriend, you, you know, you have, you have genuine attraction to this person. You just keep that goal there, but you immerse yourself in the present moment. You go with the flow of the conversation, whatever comes up. You become fully attentive to the person right in front of you instead of fully attentive to your internal dialogue. When you learn to balance that, you'll achieve your goals with much less friction than you normally would have. Okay, so this was the biggest epiphany for me that I made. So sales call is the example I gave you. Number three, and this is a huge one too that most people don't understand. Double down on yourself. What do I mean by this? On yourself. Most people who struggle with a lack of self-worth don't believe that they're worthy for nice things they're worthy of nice things. So they don't go out and buy themselves nice things. They don't invest in themselves. They just try to hoard money and save money and buy expensive presents for other people, right? So to that, I say, go out and buy yourself nice things. You deserve the best. Go out and buy yourself the nicest clothes, the nicest car, the nicest thing that you can buy, that you can afford within reason, okay? Don't get something if you're gonna settle for mediocre. So when I started to think about it this way, like if I buy clothes, if I need a shirt, I'm going to buy a really nice shirt, not a stupid expensive one. Like you can pay, f you know, stupid amounts of money for a, for a shirt, but I'm talking like the nicest quality of shirt, you know, not just in terms of expense, a shirt that makes you feel good. When you wear it, it makes you feel good. Do you see what I mean? So within reason, go out there and buy yourself the nicest things. Go out there and whatever you think is nicest, get that eat the nicest food, go and take vacations and, you know, buy yourself nice things because people with low self-esteem and low self-worth can't do these things for themselves. They can do these things for other people because they think other people are better than them, but for themselves, they can't do that. So when I made this, ep this epiphany, my self-worth started to shoot up. I started to look at myself differently. And when you start to look at yourself differently, the biggest thing that happens with a change in self-worth is that that overly critical voice inside your head saying you're not good enough goes away. When that goes away, you can start to capitalize on opportunities that are already right under your nose, right? You'll see opportunities and you'll take the leap and do them because now you have this newfound faith in yourself. The biggest reason people don't achieve their goals is because they don't believe that, the, that they can, they can achieve the goal. They don't believe that the goal is achievable because of environment or circumstances or they just don't know how to achieve the goal, right? So if you can knock off this big piece of the puzzle, which is internal, um, looking at yourself and your ability to achieve a goal, you'll figure out the rest of it. You'll figure out the how to achieve the goal. You'll figure out a way in which the goal can be achieved in this current environment, right? So double down on yourself, invest in yourself by, books, resources, invest in coaching, mentorship, and your personal development, self-care, go out and work out, um, meditate, do all of these things to help you feel good about yourself, to help you feel that you're doubling down on yourself, that you're upgrading this character. Whenever you're doubling down on yourself, your self-worth automatically goes up. It's always going to shoot up, okay? So these are the three biggest keys that have helped me 
increase my self-worth and I hope this is helpful for you. Let's do a quick recap of what we talked about today. Today we talked about self-worth and why it's so important for you to raise your self-worth and how you need, what you need to do, what three principles you need to follow and what I follow to help me raise my self-worth. We talked about principle number one, which is simply giving up the need for self-worth. Because if you keep telling yourself that you're not good enough or you're going to become good enough another day, you're reaffirming to yourself that right now in this moment, you're not good enough. Okay, the more you need self-worth, the more you tell yourself you're not worthy. Number two, don't think less of yourself. Simply think about yourself less. (laughs) Because the more you think about yourself, the more you can't help but compare this person to that person. And notice why this person isn't as good as that person. Every single person is different. It's not fair of you to compare yourself with another person. Okay? And the example I gave you here was me doing a sales call. Uh, I would think about why I wasn't good enough to help this prospect instead of thinking about the prospect's problems. And when I started to think about the prospect's problems and what I could help them with, the conversation became completely different. The vibe became completely different. Number three, double down on yourself. Do anything that's self-care oriented, like going to the gym, like meditating, like, you know, investing in your personal development or getting mentors, getting resources. Don't be afraid to spend your money, but at the same time, also save up your money within reason, right? So when you save up, you start to tell yourself you're good enough to save up. Do you see what I mean? You, you develop a healthy relationship with money and yourself. So with that, I conclude this video. Thank you so much for watching. I sincerely hope this was helpful. Uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little bell there to uh, get notified of any new video that I put out. Also, I wanted to announce that the free one-to-one consult with me and my team for the Reality Mastery program is now open. Uh, You can go down to the link in the description box below to sign up for that. Who we typically work with are people who are entrepreneurs and business owners who want to take their businesses to the next level, but what they're seeing is they don't have a tactical or strategic problem per se. What they're seeing is all of these problems that they're seeing in terms of tactics and strategies and being stuck at a certain revenue level in their business is all a manifestation of some internal problem. You know, they have some personal problem. They don't believe in themselves. They don't feel that they're worthy enough or, you know, they feel that they have all of these fears, doubts and all of these limiting beliefs that are preventing them from doing the things that they need to do in order to grow their businesses. If that sounds like you, click on the link in the description below to sign up and let's see if we can help. The free Facebook group is also open for you to take advantage of. The link for that is also in the description. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.